this same shenanigan if Congress declared war, if we were attacked like a Pearl Harbor type situation and we had to, we had to go after some very bad people. You know, and, and none of this surprises me anymore. Does it surprise you all that we've spent millions of dollars a week sending to our um, to terrorists that want to kill us? Yet we do. This administration is corrupted, top to bottom. And all this stuff, every time one of us comes against it, or you all do it, and you all have been great about exposing all this nonsense, you're labeled a conspiracy theorist. Yet... All of these conspiracy theorists are being proven true. Everything, everything, all this wild stuff you hear about and you think, oh, surely that can't be the case. It's proven true. And you all are one of the few that have the guts to expose it. And, and God bless you all because this just shows how deep this, and I keep saying, quit calling this place a swamp. A swamp is a ecosystem created by God. It's a pretty cool thing. This is an open sewer. And there is no oxygen and there is no daylight that comes into Washington, D.C. It all just comes, it's like a black hole. It just takes it all in. And these people that are in control in both daggum parties, they are shaking in their boots right now because the polls, America is waking up that, that about the way this presidential election and the way Congress should go. And it's going to force some moderates and liberals in our parties to squeeze back over on that conservative side. And that, I'm looking forward to that day. Well, Congressman, to use your word, there's lots of sewage coming out of Capitol Hill right now. Uh, is the vote for the CR still on for today? How do you plan to vote? And uh, what is the problem here? The re and I'm giving you a multi-pronged question. I realize that. Uh, but there are a lot, of, uh, a lot of people out there who say, shut this thing down. Why are we continuing to kick the proverbial can down the road with these CRs? Yes, sir. We should have been shutting it down a long time ago, not button up on an election. We think that could hurt us three to four points and that could sway Congress um, and the White House if we were to shut it down. But I, I will vote no on a CR. It is a continuation of the horrible spending policies that we, we brought in during COVID. That's Pelosi and Schumer and all this stuff, money going to to terrorist organizations, these NGOs, to all these radical woke groups all over the world, literally, that the American taxpayers are borrowing the money to fund. Those are the kind of things, and that's where we're at in this situation. They do they do not want single spending bills like we do in Tennessee. They don't they want a three thousand page bill because they can put all their stuff in it. The Democrats on one side, the Republicans on the other. Democrats will say, I want my woke policy stuff, all this bizarre stuff that's foreign to us. And then we come in on our side and say, I want all these missile defense systems that both parties own stock in. And guess what? They both get everything they want. And who gets holding the bag? The taxpayers. And right now, it'll be the taxpayers' great-grandchildren because there's no way in the world so we can pay this stuff back. So, Congressman Burchett, I just want to be clear. You say you will vote no, you are willing to potentially shut down the government and jeopardize the election in doing so. I think it's that important, but I think voting no on a CR, I can't vote for pro-abortion issues. I can't vote for um, these socialist policies that we're exporting overseas. I think it is that important. But I also think the American public realizes that it's that important. I honestly think it's going to pass enough Democrats want it and enough Republicans want it in the middle. So it will probably pass. I, I think that's the numbers I see. But mm. I've stated all along, I've never, I've not voted for CRs. I think it is bad policy. Honestly, it's unconstitutional. We, we take an oath to uphold the Constitution. And the one thing the Constitution says about Congress is what? Pass a dad gum budget. And in 30 years, we haven't passed a budget. And I'm glad to say I've upheld my constitutional right. Um, am I, that I'm that you all entrust me with, and I wish more of us did. If more of us did, if we just stayed here and worked it out, but we're going to go home, we're going to pass this thing because we got this hurricane coming in. It's always something. Hurricane's a serious deal, but you know it'll be Christmas, and we're going to pass something because nobody wants to be here on Christmas. Um, and so we're going to, you know, we'll do it again, and we'll just continue kicking this can down the road until we get some people that. You know, if my mama was running Congress, she could balance this thing on the back of her checkbook. God bless her. I find she's been gone for, I guess, a decade now, but I still find little things stuck in Bibles and 
and things where she's done her budget. And you know what? She didn't spend it if she didn't have it. And if she had it, it didn't mean she was going to spend it. And if it touches this Congress's fingers, it just it's like mercury. It just goes right through them. Well, Speaker Johnson continues to play both sides of the field here, it seems. And there are mounting calls that he needs to go. Get rid of him. What's your take on all of that? Well, he's in a difficult situation. You know, I, the one thing I like about Speaker Johnson is he doesn't lie to me and he doesn't try to get separate groups within our conference to fight against each other. He is straight up. He tells you what he thinks and he prays about it. And I, and I can't fault him for that. And also you got to realize he has a three person majority, which is very fluid because people are out, they have deaths in families, people get sick, what have you. And at any time on the floor, the Democrats can take control. And also you got to remember that several of our members like uh, our Republicans that are up in New York, that Biden won by 15 points. And he is very cognizant of that fact that he has to, it, it's not going to do us any good next time if we don't have a majority. It's not going to do Trump any good because all they're going to do is they'll fail to seat him. You've already heard um, one of the ranking members of the Democrat Party say, he's already said we're not going to seat Donald Trump if he when, when he wins. I mean, they're already conceding that pretty much. And they will use the Constitution against us and try not to seat President Trump. So um, I think there's a lot riding on this. And I'm not ready to throw him out just yet. Tim Burchett, uh, great to always have you on the show. You are uh, talking about a straight shooter. Your your pictures in the dictionary. Thank you. Even, well, e I, even though I, there are no pictures in the dictionary, but go ahead. What were you yeah, saying? Well, my, I always say John to one forty third scale. If you look, there's sometimes these little bitty pictures. But my mom and daddy were God fearing, hard working people, man. And I tell you, that, um, what's happened to their country is we just. They would, they would be a little bit disgusted, I believe. Mama flew an airplane during the war, and Daddy fought the, oh, fought wow. the Japanese, and, and they were just incredible people. Mama taught at a historically black college. Some months she got paid, some months she didn't. And um, at both, and Daddy was a dean at UT. At both their, at both their funerals, over 500 people, wow. it looked like a, a mini UN meeting because there were people from all 